Thank you, Joanne. I'm confident that with students like you, Ebony's International School will rise to greater heights. Oops, sorry, Joanne. I think they will swim through the deepest sea. The most nostalgic day for any outgoing student is the day they graduate from school. For us teachers, it is a moment of pride to see yet another batch of smart children graduate. We have nurtured them and prepared them to go with the wind of change. Such treasured memories. As teachers, and I'm sure as parents too, never mind the sleepless nights that we have spent just trying to make today's teen understand the values of life, Never mind the incomplete homework and assignments. Never mind the umpteen number of times we nurse them for fake headaches and stomach pain. Never mind the endless wait for them to return after short break or lunch break. Let us for a moment look at our youngsters and offer a silent prayer because you children are our priceless treasure. Before I invite on stage Mrs. Deepma Jadeja, mother of a graduating student, Niharika Tushayev, her views as a parent, I would like to introduce her with these few words. Mrs. Deepma Jadeja is a senior management consultant and freelance soft skill trainer. In addition to her training background, she has years of experience in human resource management, organizational behavior and counseling. There is a famous quote by Forrest Whitcraft, a teacher and a scholar where he says, a hundred years from now, it will not matter what bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the kind of car I drove, but the world may be different because I was important in the life of a child. This inspired Mrs. Deepma Jadeja to set up her own training company called The Confident Communicator. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Deepma Jadeja. Thanks, Ratan and Joanne. Those were great speeches. Respected chief guest, Professor Sadgopal, guest of honor, Sri N.A. Harris, proud parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, families, teachers, and members of the staff. Thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Sudarshan, Dr. Ebenezer, for inviting me here. But most importantly, Thank you, glorious graduates of 2015, for not protesting that invitation. I've been here a few too many times, and I promise at least for you guys, it's the last time you'll have to endure me. You know, now that I think about it, that's not true for one of you. One of you is destined to endure me for the rest of my life. But I digress. As soon as I was invited to speak here at your graduation, I began to list out the things that I wanted to tell you, the advice I wanted to give you, the cautionary tales. But then I realized you were among the smartest teens I've had the benefit of knowing. You don't need me to drone on and on about the do's and don'ts of life. You need me to tell you to go embrace life with all your mind, body, and soul. Your generation is very different from all the previous generations. We are learning as much from you as you are learning from us. I, for one, am constantly asking my kids for help with technology, among other things. You have an innate mastery of technology, an inbuilt ability to build and foster connections that no other generation before you has ever possessed. People bemoan you of being a generation that grew up in front of screens, always connected to something or someone. But the fact that we are all connected in some way is the blessing, not a curse. We can solve so many problems in the world as a result of this. Remember though, it's not just an advantage, it's a responsibility that you all carry. There are wars raging in different countries. One in nine people on our planet go, uh, go to bed hungry every night. Eight million children go missing every year. Girls and women, feel unsafe just because they are female. We can start solving many of these problems with greater awareness, brought on with greater and better connectivity. Connectivity can revolutionize every aspect of society. And you are the most connected generation in history. Be honest now. You wake up in the morning and what do you do? Check your phone, check Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Google Hangouts. Update your status to, 
I'm awake. As opposed to what? I'm not awake. Speaking of status updates, I'm reminded of the student in New York City who was walking down the street, minding his own business, and all of a sudden he was being mugged. They wanted his wallet, his watch, his credit cards, for his phone, the works. He handed all of it over, but when he gave his phone, he said to the mugger, one second, took it back, updated his status to getting mugged, and then handed back the phone. You know what's even more interesting is that the mugger seemed to accept this as completely normal behavior. Anyways, so I've said you guys are smart. You are technologically super savvy. So what can I tell you that will make a difference? After much thought, I decided I wanted to talk to you about lessons I wish someone had told the younger me 30 years ago when I sat where you sit today, graduating and on the brink of adulthood. And I came up with these. Follow your dreams. I know everyone says this and it is true. But if you don't have a dream right now or you're still not sure, that's okay too. Elizabeth Gilbert once said, if you haven't discovered your passion yet, follow your curiosities. They lead you to your passion. Let me tell you the story of a young girl who was quite a plain Jane. She was an introvert, painfully shy, wasn't good at sports, but she had this one strength. She was good with numbers and did well in math and accounting. She decided she'd capitalize on that strength and earned a master's in commerce and started working on chartered accountancy. But as she turned 21, she started realizing she changed, but her dream hadn't. She was blindly continuing her work in accounting when what she really loved was interacting with people. She didn't feel introverted anymore. She was still quite the plain Jane, but it didn't bother her as much. So she changed her dream. She went off to study human resources and she loved what she did for many years. But if you know me, that isn't the end of the story. One day, five years later, by a complete accident of fate, her dream changed again and she became a corporate trainer. 10 years into that, her dream changed again and she wanted to make a difference in the lives of children. Like Indrani Ma'am said, that this is my story. So I started working with teenagers like you. And who knows, five years from now, I might reimagine or reinvent myself once again. What I'm trying to say is that dreams change and evolve, and that's okay. If dreams didn't change, the world would be overrun with cowboys and princesses. For isn't that the dream that many boy, little boys and girls dream? So whatever your dream is right now, if you don't achieve it, don't worry. Dream up something new. You most certainly haven't failed. And if you think you have, then here's my second lesson. Don't be afraid of failure. Nobody who's worth anything has gotten to where they are without failing. No one. I love how Edison said he hadn't failed 999 times before inventing the, the light bulb. He just discovered 999 ways it couldn't be done. What if he'd given up at the 900th try? How much longer would the world have had to wait for the light bulb? Be accepting of new challenges. That's what gives you wings. And speaking of wings, here's another story. I know, I love telling stories. There was a man who was fascinated with the struggle of a butterfly trying to come out of its cocoon. He watched it tug at the time and time again at the silk threads of the cocoon. And as the hours passed, the poor little thing was struggling quite a bit and was tiring. This young man was raised to be empathetic like all of you and began to feel terribly sorry for this little creature. And several, several hours into the process, the little butterfly just seemed to give up and things got really quiet in that cocoon. Our young man decided to help. He took out his little Swiss army knife and snipped away at the last few threads of that cocoon and the butterfly emerged. He was thrilled, but the butterfly couldn't fly. It just kept crawling around. Its body was quite swollen and its wings were really limp. You see, the man with completely honorable intentions had actually crippled the butterfly. The struggle out of the cocoon is to force the fluid out of the, uh, out of the body and into the wings. And by helping, 
he had in hindered that process. Challenges, failures don't cripple us. Sometimes well-meaning help does. This is as much a lesson for us as parents who want to jump in and rescue our kids, want them to not struggle, not to deal with pain, sorrow, or any unhappy emotion. We have to make ourselves stronger and trust the process our kids are going through. Trust the process that the end will take care of itself. Embrace challenges. They're here to make you stronger. Lesson number three, you guys are on your way. Great things are in your future. I've already told you, you're a smarter, sharper, and definitely more intuitive generation than we were. Thanks to us. You didn't think I was going to let you run away with all the credit. Thanks to how we've raised you. Thanks to your school. Thanks to your teachers. Give them all a big hand. As you stride on towards your dreams, your goals, your success, your utopia, look back every once in a while. Stay in touch with old friends. Fly hundreds of kilometers to attend their weddings. Go visit when they have kids. Love your parents, even when, even when they cease to be your caregiver. Love them even more when you are their caregiver. Keep in touch with your teachers. A small note an SMS, a WhatsApp, an email, or whatever other technology you might have invented by then. Use it to say hello to the first people that gave you your wings. Another lesson I wish I'd learned younger, everyone you meet is special. Everyone can teach you something. One last story, I promise. It's about a young boy who was on vacation with family. He was strolling along the riverbank looking for crabs and turtles and eels and other stuff that little boys are very fascinated with. In one of the holes on that riverbank, he found a bunch of hardened clay balls. And as he strolled along the bank, he'd throw the clay balls one at a time into the river as far as he could. He saved one ball, though, as a, as a souvenir of his vacation. Many years ago, he was reading an article about how pirates would hide their gems in clay and put them in river banks or in sea caves. Curious, he went and got his ball, broke it open, and lo and behold, there was a beautiful, precious stone in there. He was ecstatic. And then it struck him. He had thrown away maybe 50 or 60 of the clay balls with their hidden treasure into the river all those years ago. He could have taken home tens of thousands of dollars, but he'd just thrown it all away. The lesson? Very often we look at someone, even ourselves, and see just the exterior, the external clay ball that isn't beautiful or bright, to be discarded as worthless. We see the person as unimportant, not beautiful enough, not stylish enough, not wealthy enough, not impressive enough. And we don't take the time to find that treasure inside. May we not come to the end of our lives and discover that we have thrown away a fortune in friendships and relationships because the gems were hidden away behind a covering of clay. Lastly, for you guys, these past few years have been a blast, mostly. But unfortunately, life can't just be a series of fun, fun, fun. For example, this entire next month, most of you are going to be hitting the books. And that's not all going to be fun for sure. But like Steve Jobs said, if you realize that there's too many consecutive weeks or months that go by and you're not having fun, you need to change something. Don't be afraid, graduates, of making that change. What's the worst that can happen? You'll fail? Well, no big deal. Find me someone who hasn't failed. Find something that excites you. Pursue it. See what becomes of it. If it doesn't work out, find something else. Life really isn't that short, friends. Like I said earlier, change your dreams. Follow your curiosities. And I guarantee you, the next 70, 80 years will be a blast too. Mostly. Trust me on this one. In all seriousness, life is not lived in the glow of a monitor. It's not a series of status updates. Life is about you. 
who you love, how you live, who you travel with through, through the world, your family, your friends. Life is a social experience first, and the best experiences are those spent in the company of others. Sure, our landscape has changed, but it's our humanity that makes us who we are. And who we are, who you are, is a proud and talented group of Ebenezerites. Stay close, stay strong, stay in touch through the winds of change. I've said this to you before, but I'll say it again. To have led a successful life, you don't need to be wealthy, pretty, handsome, powerful, or famous. You just have to make your mother and father proud of you. And that you've already done. So go, conquer the world, class of 2015. All the very best, and God bless. Thank you, Mrs. Deepa Jarija, for that beautiful speech. You sure indeed are a confident communicator. Ladies and gentlemen, accompanied by the members of the music department, Mr.